Hey guys, what's up? So this video is brought to you by Linode. If you guys are looking to get into hosting, you're trying to do machine learning, artificial intelligence on your own, you're going to save a ton of money by going to Linode over Azure or AWS. I know from personal experience on that, I've been using Linode now for eight years. So they keep growing. They just opened up a new location in Mumbai. So all my Indian peeps, uh, make sure you guys check them out and uh, have a good day. Hey guys, what's up? So in this video, I'm going to be talking about JavaScript and the best way to learn it. In my opinion, I've been doing this 10 years now. I've been writing JavaScript 10 years and I can tell you just recently, I've actually kind of deviated away. And I say recently, maybe in the last three, four years, something like that. But I deviated away from the whole jQuery way of doing things. I've been in React now for five years. Uh, I, I would say I'm an excellent React developer. Uh, these frameworks and all that exist though, because JavaScript itself at the lower level is very, very difficult to work with. It's a duct typed, uh, it's got prototypical inheritance versus like a class based system. Um, it's got, it, it's considered to be a functional language where functions are first class citizens that can be passed around like, uh, you know, uh, parameters to an argument. You have things like callback functions, the asynchronous nature of JavaScript, all that shit is hard to wrap your head around and literally impossible for any beginner developer. So I don't care how good the author is that wrote the JavaScript book, you're simply not gonna read a JavaScript book and understand everything that there is to know about JavaScript. The only way you're gonna be able to do that is to start writing lower level JavaScript, which is the point of this video. And I'm also gonna mention the MDN documents. You don't need to go to any YouTuber or video, like a video tutorial, you don't need Pluralsight, you don't need none of that stuff. You just need to start writing JavaScript. Dude, anybody will tell you if you wanna be a good coder, it takes practice. Hopefully you practice as much as you can at work. Um, a lot of times at work though, we're not really practicing, so we have to still continue to practice at home, which kind of sucks. But the point is though, is the only way you're gonna to get to be a very good developer is through sheer repetition and practice, that's really it. There's no shortcut around this. Even the smartest people in the world cannot shortcut their way around practicing coding to be a better programmer. So considering the fact that I don't recommend any book that any beginner developer needs, um, I feel like some of these programming books, some of the most, you know, some of the best parts of them are like the entire forward, right? Where they're talking about this and that that you can do with it, which is why I like YouTube, honestly, because that's what we do. We talk about all this and that you can do with it. Uh, but then the book starts getting into all this like, you know, this like technical stuff of the JavaScript language. And we're not really creating things. And like, you're creating things that the author thinks that you should create. And like, you're learning about um, how to pass functions and parameters and all this shit that like is really the same in every language. But with JavaScript, like it's a, it's an event based system. Like a lot of JavaScript, like a lot of everything we do with JavaScript is all about DOM manipulation and events. And um, that's something that you just have to grasp from the ground level. And no framework is going to help you get in fact, I would actually say frameworks are probably um, a roadblock to becoming a really, really good JavaScript developer. So how do you get started? I recommend MDN. If you want official documentation, stuff that like will make your eyes glaze over because this is mostly text, I, I say use this as like a reference more than actual book. You don't just read it through and start doing things one at a time. But every nook and cranny of the JavaScript language uh, is is documented with MDN and and you can learn way more about what you can do with that information here than you can with any book. So to get started, um, you just have to go ahead and uh, and download Visual Studio Code. And I would recommend not putting your scripts inside your actual HTML. The the reason why you want to have an actual uh, separate I'll just say my file.js. You want to have a separate JavaScript file is because in order to debug and step through your code. In, uh, in Google Chrome or any other browser, you wanna have an external style sheet. You're not gonna be able to step through your code if it, it is embedded into HTML. So if that makes any sense, you can have JavaScript embedded into HTML just like this, but you cannot step through that code if it's embedded this way. So it's best to go ahead and just simply reference an external file, right? Which is my file JS and have all your code inside here. So that way, if I say, you know what? Uh, var x equals, you know, we'll, we'll be more technical, right? Uh, l let x equals uh, testing. All right, and then um, we're just gonna go ahead and alert x. All right, so now if we go ahead and view the file, you now get the testing message when we go ahead and pull this up. So one of the reasons why we wanna put this into an external page though is because that then gives you the ability to debug. So if you go ahead and you go over to your sources here, 
Um, the best way to do it is just simply to have it right here. So you can actually just put your breakpoints in this external file that should just be all JavaScript. Now here, when I refresh, you can hit the breakpoints. There's no other way to code. You have to code this way. There, there's no other way. Every, it doesn't matter if you're doing C Sharp, Java, um, or anything like that. You have to have a debugging capability. One of the things that sucks so bad about Python when I was first getting started, when I compared Python to like C Sharp and Visual Studio, Visual Studio and C Sharp gave you all these debugging tools right out of the box and it all worked. Python, they're like, hey, you can use uh, PDB or whatever, and that shit sucked. Uh, but, you know, a lot of Python people probably disagree with that, but it sucks compared to C Sharp and, and Visual Studio. But then a lot of Python people, especially coming from Linux, they're like, you know, fuck Microsoft. That's way too much work because you can write an entire like Bible sized novel on how to even interact with Visual Studio itself. And I'm not talking about Visual Studio code. That's a separate project from Visual Studio, the flagship IDE integrated development environment from Microsoft. However, the more I realize, the more development I do, the harder things that I build and create, the more I need an actual ecosystem that works for me. So I need to have debugging capabilities. This is the best way to do it in JavaScript. That way you can really start to, to, to verify what's going on here. I mean, it gives you the ability to like highlight over stuff. You can see the value of that variable. Um, and you know, it's just like, it's gonna be more than that because obviously your code gets way, way more complex when it, uh, when, when you start debugging things, you can look and you're like, oh shit, I'm passing a function and I'm executing that function as I pass it. So basically I'm passing the result of that function and not the function itself. Little things like that are much easier to catch when you're debugging. All right, so simply put, you guys can actually follow along with tutorials if you want, but what I think you should do is you should build something with JavaScript. You should build your own template engine, like your view engine. And how do you do that? You do that by creating elements. And it's a low level concept within JavaScript. It's not difficult, but I could say my element, which is a lot of times you, you have these DOM elements, that's what they're called. Uh, but here I can go ahead and just go, I can, I can assign it an actual value. I can create a new, uh, a new element just from scratch, right? Like, so if I wanna create an anchor tag or a div tag or any of that stuff, I can do anything I want. I could say uh, equals document dot create element. And then here you just simply pass what it is that you want to pass. So I'm going to create a div tag, right? And let, you know, let's just create an H1 because this will be a little bit easier. So now I have my H1. So my element can then be modified. It's now a, a, an actual, uh, uh, an element here. You can see that this is HTML heading element. So it knows that it's a heading element. So what kind of, what kind of things can you do to it, right? You have inner HTML, if you wanted to actually inject like a span tag inside of your your uh, your H1, you would have to create a span tag. So if I wanted to do that, let my span equals, uh, and again, document dot create element, not attribute, but element, and here's a span. So, all right, so now we have both an H1 and a span. So if I wanted to say, you know what, uh, let's go ahead and, and put a value in here. So my span, dot text or uh, the inner text and that's another thing too by getting uh, using Visual Studio Code you get this IntelliSense so you, when you do a dot it gives you all the different possible attributes and functions and methods and all the stuff that you can you can you know do things with in order to change the way that this works so this is the low level stuff that I'm talking about this is going to make you the best JavaScript developer by simply building out your own JavaScript HTML, like have JavaScript write your HTML, read the HTML, have it create events and all this stuff. So anyway, let's go ahead and do inner text of this. And we're just gonna say your mother. I shouldn't do that, but all right. So now to work with the my spam, what we need to do is say, you know what, my spam, actually we wanna add the, uh, take the, the my spam and add it to my, uh, my element. So what I'm gonna do is just say my element append child and you could just append my span. All right, so now what I wanna do though, is I wanna go ahead and, and append my element to the document body. So I'm gonna say document.body.appendChild and then put in my element. 
All right, so what we've done is we virtually, with JavaScript, created a HTML DOM element, and then we're now injecting it into our HTML. Very similar to how React, Angular, Vue, all that stuff works on a lower level. And when we go and we look at the page now, we get this actual H1 inside of here. And when we inspect it, you can see the H1 contains a span. Both of these were virtually created by JavaScript and injected into the page after the page loaded. There's no other way of getting better at JavaScript besides doing this type of low-level stuff. So the next thing you want to get really good at after you're good with creating elements from scratch and you know appending them, creating your DOM tree in the right way that you want to do, you then also need to deal with attributes. And attributes are going to be how we can dynamically... Uh, actually, I'm going to put the style right inside here, just the style. We're going to create a class in here, uh, custom class. color pink all right so we're gonna change the color of whatever this class is applied to to pink so we only have the h1 so how do you do that well in the my element which is the h1 tag what I could do is say my element dot class list dot append or dot add I'm sorry it's an add there's a specific add method and that's actually where it gets confusing with JavaScript because like you get accustomed to append child which is a function call you pass in the element class list dot add you can attach a class to an uh, to an element in a different way than this but the class list has the ability to have an add function that gives you the ability to just pass in a class name so what I got custom class is that the name of it yep custom class all right so that just like that we can now add attributes to our JavaScript element so if I go to refresh this we now have pink so this is actually taking a custom class that was defined inside the head which is perfectly fine although not something that's very scalable this is most likely going to be in some sort of external page or it could be a bootstrap class that you're assigning to this thing it doesn't matter as long as the class is accessible then you can go ahead and add it to your attribute which is what we've done here now once you get done with attributes and you get very comfortable with like adjusting the height the the, the width and all these different other attributes that every html element has then you need to get into JavaScript events. And JavaScript events are something that it's going to take a long time to probably wrap your head around, but it's something that, that React does better than everybody else. And they've been doing that better than everybody else for a long time, so that's why it's a really good product. But the, the magic of how does React know when data is stale and all that stuff, it all comes down to event-driven stuff right this is a javascript's a very event driven language node.js is very event driven and in order to get accustomed with events <laughs> you just simply have to write them lower level you're actually going to create an actual event object so let me see an example here because i don't feel like doing this um but ah oh, shitty site this is why you go to mdn and really for events, this is gonna take another 10 minutes or so, so I'm not gonna do that, but I will just uh, direct you to the documentation here for MDN because it's much better than anything else. And this is gonna give you a simple example of how you can go ahead and fire a button, uh, or click a button, and then uh, create an event and then do something. All right, so here, uh, let me see where the... All right, guys, that last page did not have what I wanted. What you want to do is just start creating and triggering events for MDN. This is going to teach you from the ground level how to create a custom event, attach it to an element like we saw with our attribute where we attached a class. You can attach event in much the same way. So then that element is now listening for some sort of event that could be firing off. And every element that's listening for that event can take some sort of action. You could reuse and reshare that code. But ultimately, guys, this is how you're going to get better. You have to build your own HTML elements in JavaScript. You need to be able to bind them to the DOM, remove them from the DOM. You need to be able to add and remove attributes, and you need to be able to add and remove and react to events. Beyond that, it's really a lot about... Really, you know, beyond that, you're going to understand all the other pieces of functionality that JavaScript provides. There's literally a file API that JavaScript provides for reading files, for uploading. Uh, there's all these different APIs that do different things, but if you can grasp this lower level stuff, then those APIs are gonna make much, much more sense. And then you're also gonna find that it makes much more sense 
when you realize what React is doing and what Angular is doing and some of this, uh, this core code that we use every single day. And it's really not magic. It's just, it's lower level JavaScript. But without understanding this lower level stuff, you're always gonna be hampered because when I was first getting started development, it was all about, you didn't have to know JavaScript. In fact, the argument was that you had to use, you just had to know jQuery. Now everybody says jQuery is the biggest piece of shit that's ever hit the internet. And it's, it, you know, it's obviously bloated and stuff compared to what the DOM does, but it had a purpose for a very, very long time. And a lot of the younger developers now don't understand where we were 10 years ago. So, um, yeah, that, that, my point is though, is that there, there's always been this, Hey, you should learn react. You should learn angular. You should learn this and that and the other thing. But really what I think is you learn lower level JavaScript first.